Does anyone here have a best friend? How do you know if someone is your best friend? Okay, so I heard multiple answers. Is it more of an innate feeling or a culmination of actions that proves, you know, like somebody does a bunch of stuff to prove that they are your best friend? Is it just you feel it or do they prove it? Hello there. And welcome to Weird Music on the Glumberger channel. This is, of course, the show where we discuss, you know, a different album every week, essentially. <laughs> Stuff that's usually just a little bit different, I would say. And so in today's episode, we're going to be looking, taking a look at what I think is a really special album, in my opinion. Now, it's, um, I will admit it, I'm probably a bit late to introducing myself properly to this artist's work, but I'm glad I got there eventually as... Um, since discovering this particular album, I just truly adore it though. It's, I'm not sure why, but it just captures this fascination with existentialism uh, to me, presented you know, as abstract experimental music. <laughs> it doesn't make total sense, but it doesn't really need to, so you know, whatever. <laughs> Today I present the wonderful Claire Rousey, of course, and her 2022 album, Everything Perfect is Already Here. And so, of course, let's ask the question, who is Claire Rousey? Well, Claire Rousey is a queer-identifying transgender musician whose work delves into personal emotions of the minutia of everyday life. And so across her career, uh, Rousey has pushed out this incredible discography of you know, experiments of music, delving deep into these personal themes presented to us in these very abstract yet fascinating ways. It's quite a disparate discography, I would say at times, you know, uh, sometimes delving into, you know, uh, uh, from approachable experimental ambient style compositions, you know, uh, some with a lot of experimentalism and then others are just these really sort of chaotic, noisy dirges. Um, now, uh, uh, just to quickly mention, it, um, I discovered Claire Rousey through her album she released on Fault Records, no doubt, which was a really weird album, no doubt. but. Through there, discovered a lot of her other works, including this one, and yeah, I really wanted to talk about this one today. <laughs> and so in today's episode, yeah, we are of course looking at Everything Perfect is Already Here, a roughly 30-minute album released through Shelter Press in 2022, uh, featuring two compositions, of course. You get track one, It Feels Foolish to Care, and then of course track two, Everything Perfect is Already Here. <laughs> And so together, these two different compositions, it creates this incredibly beautiful and wistful album experience that really conjures up, some, conjures up a myriad of images in your mind as it just gently occurs along. Much of the tracks, uh, they feel like this collage of disparate sources, you know, ranging from ambience to neoclassical to field recordings, and it all creates this constantly shifting experience that effortlessly glides from scene to scene. What's interesting though is how, uh, although the literal sounds are constantly changing throughout the compositions, there's this constant general vibe being presented by the album itself that maintains itself throughout the entire recording, throughout these you know, strange different sounds, if that makes sense. And it creates this really beautiful little listening experience that feels existential, but not in that terrifying way, more in that sort of wistful pondering, you know, and sort of fascination with the mere feeling, if that makes sense. So, let's talk about it, shall we? Let's talk about it. <laughs> it feels foolish to care. It opens up with a peculiar assortment of micro sound bubbling and popping in the channel as Claire stumbles over her own words before we're introduced to the most beautiful and gentle acoustic instruments that play so slowly, so precisely with 
just this caring precision alongside field recordings of you know, the, the daily hustle and bustle of ordinary activity and existence, you know. Uh, and then it, offs it offsets the entire before, uh, recordings, I would say, anchoring it to a very specific time and place as it navigates from moment to moment within the everyday. The everyday, essentially. <laughs> And as a result, it's, you know, it's wistful, it's melancholy, as these, these fragments of moments become little memories of you know, the very everyday itself, you know, specifically for Rousey, of course. And you can't help but feel a, a little bit comforted and at peace, you know, within that very existential gaze into the nature of what it is to exist and to feel and to, you know, just, just be, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think it's such a beautiful combination, you know, of just lovely little musical motifs, arpeggios, these random strings being plucked, and it, it, it all just sounds so beautiful and gentle and downright lovely as the field recording to continue to guide it throughout, you know, the very day itself. <laughs> and there's a sense of movement, I feel, as these musical motifs, you know, they'll fade, letting the presence of field recordings take over. Um, take precedent as it then guides a track to another musical passage though. Then you get the twinkling of piano notes and drones offset by the creaking of apparatus or doors or something, you know. <laughs> no, there's something so gentle to, to the rises and descents of, and those recordings, they just continue to place you in that specific moment wherever that may be. The tapping away, the rustling of leaves, etc., etc., as the multitude of moments become intertwined with the gentle ambient swells. For us listeners, you know, all of us having our own experiences, memories, and things, it you know, it can conjure up pretty much anything depending on who you are and you know how you feel and stuff. And you know, it could be any moment, you know, like. Um, any place that uh, or location that your mind wanders to and conjures up images of, so like uh, you know, sitting in a cottage kitchen, for example, you know, with the waning sun radiating through the thin curtains above the sink, perhaps you know, the very dust particles themselves illuminated through the rays of light themselves, you know, above a wooden kitchen table, perhaps you know, <laughs> it could be, it could be, it could be anywhere, but perhaps only Claire Rousey and you know the company she keeps also present from time to time, you know, within the very field recordings, actually. Um, only they have any inkling into the true nature of such field recordings. And, you know, it, it's a fascinating way, you know, it, it's almost disparate, you know, field recording, musical passion stuff, but it all just f comes together so beautifully that they intertwine into these beautiful musical pa passages and, you know, vice versa as well, giving... They're both giving each other the space to breathe and present themselves and their textures in spite of those differences they have, just to harmoniously come together into something very beautiful and effective, I feel. Almost disparate sources, you know, humming of machinery or the day itself, you know, and then the gentle improvisation on an acoustic piano ringing out with its natural resonance on a particular note, for example. It, it's weird, it really makes me feel existential, I feel. Now, when you consider the importance, perhaps, of moments themselves, you know. Perhaps Claire is right, though. It is foolish to care. But it's also beautiful for just existing exactly as it is, I feel. <laughs> and so the second track, um, Everything Perfect is Already Here, follows on much in the same fashion, I would say, you know, showcasing that same breath of fresh creativity and a beautiful accompaniment uh, to the first composition. Uh, you get the strings again, guiding its way to that sort of unusual assortment of acoustic instruments into peculiar field recordings, and almost a collage of different musical genres that show, somehow come together so perfectly to create this harmonious picture that paints a whole when you stand back and look at it at a distance. And much like that first track, it's you know, just conjuring up all these different images, these places, these fragments of memories, looking at a photograph, remembering standing in a place, the smells, the the vision, the look, everything just, just, it just, uh, your mind just wanders away to all these different places as you listen to these recordings. I think it's lovely though. I once, and I find it interesting, you know, on both of these tracks to be fair, there's no real way to guess where the compositions are headed, if that makes sense, you know. Even if you've heard it numerous times, you know, you just constantly hear new things within it, I feel. 
You know, the swell, in, in this particular one, the swell of violins gently guide it to a particular, a peculiar assortment of uh, electronics, into the murmuring hum of the everyday, into feel recordings of, you know, the sound of existing and being and stuff, you know? And there's so much hustle and bustle of the everyday world here, the sounds of life simply drifting on past at its own pace. Sometimes it feels a bit weird and unusual, but there is a delight in that, especially in the combination of such beautiful musical passages from the guest musicians on the album as well. And what I love um, you know, about experimental compositions like this, um, you know, when things may feel disparate on some level, but it's all combining so effortlessly into this amazing whole that creates for us, in this case, an incredibly beautiful and, you know, as mentioned, ex existential, maybe even cathartic album experience for us, you know? And I love how the second track, you know, it pull like, much like the first track as well, but it, it pulls up that sort of sense of wistful sense of reminiscence, I would say. <laughs> I said that very badly. A wistful sense of reminiscing. <laughs> you know, look at just like looking at these old photographs as when you were younger, the way a house used to look or the way things used to be when things felt, I know, almost simpler and calmer in a sense. Now, I feel like this album, it's weirdly akin to, you know, remembering various memories from fuzzy distorted ones from so long ago to those incredibly clear ones that have stayed so vividly in your mind for many, many years on end. And it's just simply where my mind wanders to, although this is you know, this expression is Claire Rousey's experience, of course, and thus this collage of various sounds obviously means something significant to her. But you as a listener can't help but think about yourself to some extent, I would feel like. You know, we put ourselves into what we're hearing, if that makes sense, and we make our own understanding and inferences based on our own experiences, if that makes sense. And I think it's lovely, though. Like, yeah, there's this... Now, there's obviously this thing that you know, means a lot to Claire Rousey, but I think she's made something a bit universal here that we can all just you know, feel something towards. I feel that makes sense, you know? <laughs> it's interesting, though. I personally think this album, though, it's, it's summed up incredibly well by the final paragraph on the Bandcamp page. Um, it perhaps words these things a little bit better than I ever could, to be fair, so just to read it a bit. These two compositions find peace between these modes. They sweep you away and then bring you to earth. But which is which anyway? Their mode of feeling is inquisitive. Where am I now? What has changed outside of me? What has changed inside of me? The music, like the answers to these questions, is loose and beautiful in surprising ways. I think it's just so beautifully worded here, and it kind of captures that sense of existentialism to our very existence and how and why we feel certain things, you know? And I feel Claire, you know, it's present, she's presented to us what I can only describe as a perfect little album experience here, one where you've got so many disparate sources of sounds, be it musical or field recordings or even lowercase hums, etc, etc, etc. But it all creates this incredibly beautiful existential listening album experience packaged together in this really peculiar little way. And I think perfectly named for the two different compositions, you know, the first track, it, you know, it feels foolish to care, sort of a sense of thinking too much on certain things, even though your mind's just going to do so anyway in a foolish activity, of course. But of course, minds being what they are, they will do exactly what they want. They will think upon a past, replay certain interactions and wonder what it is we could have done differently, although we should just forget and move on. And But regardless, part of us still cares deeply about our past experiences. But then we find solace in that we're not alone in these, you know, these silly thoughts, because it's human to do so, you know, to err is to human. <laughs> And of course you have the title track of the second uh, the title of the second track everything perfect is already here coming to an understanding and acceptance of who and where you are currently in this time and place you know if one just looks around and takes in all the small minute details of what what it what is perfect perhaps you know but what is perfect i think i think the sheer fact that we're all just these weird existential human beings existing in this universe that's essentially experiencing itself, you know? The fact that we're alive, that we can feel and think, you know, it's kind of perfect in its own way. And 
Navy, I find it, I certainly find it a fascinating wonder into pure existentialism, and I think Claire has done a truly beautiful job of uh, presenting to it so in terms of this abstract music, essentially. <laughs> and so with that, I think we've come to the end of our kind of unusual episode of Weird Music there, you know. I think, without a doubt, this is arguably one of my favourite experimental releases I've ever had the fortune to come across, you know. And although I don't understand things on an academic level, I have always had this fascination with the sheer notion of existence for as long as I can remember, even though I never understood why exactly. To, to be experience an album that, to me, revels in this fascination is truly a delight to me. And with Claire expressing it so clearly and concisely in a way that feels wistful, melancholy, but delightful and beautiful, it... It's just a perfect little half-hour album excursion that reveals new things to you each and every time you hear it. Whether it be a particular note, or an electronic drone, or the sound of someone saying something briefly, you know, although slightly indiscernible, of course. It's all just so lovely and pretty, and I think it's wonderful in every single sense of the word. Now, it might be foolish of me to care so much about an album like this, but as she says, everything perfect it's already here. <laughs> With that, I would like to thank you for watching this unusual episode of Weird Music. Um, I wish you all the best. Take care and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>